this video is about the symbolism of frogs in Forrest Fenn's Treasure Chase as set out in his book The Thrill of the Chase. The key term that I will be referring to is amphibology which sounds a bit like amphibian or amphibiology which applies to the biology of frogs. However amphibology actually refers to words which can have double meanings. This is an example of amphibology which actually came through an email from the Australian Writers Centre explaining the term. The example that was used was the statement, the man saw the boy with binoculars. Obviously that statement is ambiguous and can be read two ways as in did the man see the boy using binoculars or did the boy have the binoculars so without using commas that statement can can be read two ways so that's an example of amphibology the relevance of that to the forest fen treasure chase is that there are a number of statements in the book and in the poem which may be read both ways and perhaps Forrest is alluding to the fact that there are actually two interpretations of his words to solve the clues and to find the treasure. The double meaning and the amphibology is set up early on in the thrill of the chase on pages six and seven. This is page six, refers to, well, I'm almost 80 and I think that's so funny. Oh, I don't mean it's funny because I'm almost 80, but it's funny because I said it that way, which gives you an insight as to the thinking that one statement can be interpreted two ways. Also on page six, when my wife built our house, she put a skylight in my bathroom flat above the shower, which doesn't really explain, but there is also two meanings there, as in what is a bathroom flat above the shower. Then you go on to my dear friend Eric Sloan was a painter and writer of large note. So I guess you can say he's painted and written quite a few books or you can say he has painted and written a large note one note that's two interpretations then you go on further oh I don't mean he was funny because he said he said he was going to die but funny because he had all that figured out again two meanings you go on to page seven also referring to Eric Sloan, when he turned 80, he gave himself a surprise birthday party because he was surprised he'd lived that long. Again, the usual meaning is surprise birthday party is put on by other people rather than the person having the party. Then it goes on, he died two weeks later while standing on a street corner in Manhattan waiting for the light to change. Who knows how long he might have lived if he hadn't had to wait for the light. Again, two interpretations of that earlier statement, which sets it up quite nicely for Forrest Fenn educating the reader that there is every possibility that there are two interpretations of these statements. Again on page seven, he was married five times and he said he always married housekeepers because when he divorced, they kept the house. Again, two interpretations of housekeepers. Then we get onto Forrest talking to his father. The statement, we both knew I wasn't going to college, me because I didn't think I could make it and him because he didn't think I could make it. So it's the same statement but two different perspectives, one from his father's point of view, one from Forrest Fenn's point of view. Again, it indicates there could be possibly two meanings to statements. 
Then it goes on, I just tried to shake my head yes and no at the same time, but that was hard to do. Occasionally it's wise for the fox to dress like the hound. Again, this is two interpretations, that Forrest shaking his head yes and no seems contradictory, and also for the fox to dress like the hound, so some things are not as they seem. This is an article on thoughtco.com about amphiboly or amphibology, whichever is the preferred term. And if you scroll down to characteristics of amphibolies, to become a skilled perpetrator of amphibolies, you must acquire a certain nonchalance towards punctuation, especially commas. That ties into Scrapbook 188 on Dale Neitzel's site. And at the end of that post by Forrest Fenn, a personal note, I've been criticised for the way I write and use words. I say too much, mix verb tenses, use commas wrong, and I can't spell. I just read through my story above about Dizzy Dean and removed all the commas. So that fits in with the thoughtco.com theory about how to carry out amphibolies or amphibologies, whichever is the preferred term. So how do we get from frogs to amphibology? Throughout the thrill of the chase, there are numerous references to frogs, as seen here on page 133. And with the page 132 poem at the top of the page refers to continuation containing nine clues that he followed precisely will lead to the end of my rainbow and the treasure. The reference to rainbow could possibly be to the song The Rainbow Connection as sung by Kermit the Frog and I thought that was a fairly tenuous or uncertain connection until I looked up Jim Henson and details of his life. If you go to the Wikipedia entry for Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, who died in 1990 under illness and death, at the very end you find Henson was cremated and in 1992 his ashes were scattered near Taos in New Mexico. There's also a newspaper article or post from one of the publications in New Mexico which gives details on the ashes being scattered amongst hills around Taos. The connection there is to the story tea with Olga and Forrest scattering the ashes of Olga around Taos Mountain. The similarities seem to catch my attention that perhaps Forrest is referring to the Rainbow Connection, some of the meaning in those lyrics in that song, which seems to fit with Forrest's own version of his challenges set out in My War For Me in The Thrill Of The Chase. It may be a tenuous connection, but it may be valid. That is for you to decide. So if frogs are relevant to the solution in locating the treasure, they are amphibians. If you look up Merriam Webster's definition, cold-blooded vertebrates such as frogs, toads or salamanders. In accordance with Forrest Fenn's wordplay on altering one letter and getting a completely different meaning, if you look up amphibiology, that refers to the branch of zoology that deals with the amphibia, such as frogs. Now, if you change one letter in that word, you get amphibology. And the definition of amphibology is a sentence or phrase such as nothing is good enough for you that can be interpreted in more than one way. 
So this may be the key or a word which is key to interpreting the poem and perhaps that is hinting that there are two ways to interpret words in the poem. There may be a simplistic way, there may be a way which is biased by people's view on how it should read or what it is referring to. So that may open up the poem to other possibilities for interpreting clues and working out where the treasure is. This is an example of Forrest Fenn's wordplay on page 139 of The Thrill of the Chase where knowledge is spelt without a D and also on the bronze jars which he, he has cast. So this may be part of an indication that just one letter changing may be of some significance or relevance in solving clues. So this may be some indication that changing simply one letter may result in a significant change in meaning and maybe what Forrest is hinting at. As an example of the double meaning which may be read into certain statements, if you look at page 132 the sentence continues so I wrote a poem containing nine clues that, if followed precisely, will lead to the end of my rainbow and the treasure. There's two ways of interpreting that. Either you follow the nine clues precisely, or you follow the poem precisely, which will get you to the text on page 133. So perhaps there is something of significance in that text on page 133, which if you use a second or alternative meaning for the statement just above the poem, may render a completely different interpretation or outcome. As to what exactly is meant in the poem is up to you, however there are quite a few lines which don't finish with a comma and perhaps that leads to a whole new world of meaning and perhaps that leads to alternative interpretations of the words. That is for you to decide. I hope I have explained how to get from frogs to amphibians to amphibiology to amphibology and to alternative meanings to words in the poem or in The Thrill of the Chase. My thinking may have been a bit distorted. I may not have explained it as well as I could have. However, that is the concept. Good luck in trying to make some alternative meanings out of Forrest Fenn's words. If you are a searcher for Forrest Fenn's treasure, please remember to stay safe and good luck in your search. Before I go, this is a quick look at what is scheduled to appear on my channel YNP Solve on 20 April 2020 at 8 p.m. US Eastern Time. There's about six videos. These times which are shown are Australian Eastern Standard Time. So they should come through on 20 April US Eastern Time at 8 p.m. So anyway, that should be about the end of my involvement with the Forest Fen Treasure Chase. I'm not a searcher, but good luck to the persons who are actively searching for the treasure. One thing I will say with these videos, they anticipate a 12 mile hike to retrieve the treasure. So whoever follows this solution and the refinements to my existing videos and that solution, you will need to be prepared to have a 12 mile hike through fairly flat country to retrieve the chest. One other thing to note, if you want to look at the rainbow connection video 
on YouTube at the start of the Muppet movie. When the camera zooms into the swamp, the trees actually resemble the same shape as the island where, in my solve, I believe Forest Fen has hidden the treasure. Just something else to consider if you're going through my other videos with that solution or the videos which will be released on 20 April US time.